Escons, a Python-based build system. When it comes to understandability, Python beats everything else. Today we will look at the build system which promises exactly the same benefits. With Escons, it is possible to use the complete toolbox of Python to configure your build files. You can build your build system any way you want. Hi, my name is Zen and welcome to my channel. The first thing if you want to build a program with Escons is that you need to get Escons itself. And so we're going to do that by typing in our console sudo apt-get. So we're using again the package manager to install it. And Escons itself is simply named Escons. It might be that it asks you for your password when you type that one in because you need to be in sudo mode. And now we already see that this one is installed. And to get our first very simple example running, the only thing that we need alongside our main file is a so-called S construct file. You see the Visual Studio Code already gives us this nice little icon. Um, so it already knows that this is some sort of a special file. And if we look inside it, this one is pretty straightforward. So it is following completely the Python syntax and it's basically Python code, which means that for anybody who is familiar with Python, this is quite easy to use. What we're doing is we're getting our environment created and afterwards we're telling our environment that we want to have a specific program, which we call my program. And this one only depends on my main.cpp. To build exactly this, we need to go to our console and then type in as cons. And if we don't type in anything, it will build all the targets that we have defined in our as construct file. In that uh, regard, in, it will build main.o and afterwards link it to my program. So we see that here now my program has been created and uh, as well as my main object file and also some dependency build tree that is alongside that. If we want to run the program now, we can just do it shortly to prove that it actually does work. So here we see the output of our program. Now the thing that we also want to do is to clean this up. So in this case, the clean is not a separate target as it is in make, CMake or other build tools, but it's basically an option of the program. So we use scons minus minus clean. And here we see that it cleans up the main and my program. However, though, it doesn't clean up this, um, yeah, this uh, dependency table. Now we want to look at a little bit more complex example. So let me shortly clear that one. And we're going to go to our complex example. And in the complex example, we will have three different CPP files which depend on each other and also some header files which are also included. So the first thing, just to show how this one would work here with using S construct files, is that we create again an environment and this environment here uses additional things. For instance, we can define specific uh, variables that should be added to the path. We can define specific defines or we can also override the C standard that we or C++ standard that we want to use. Then again, we use it to create our program. And here this one is a little bit better than it was is with other build tools because you can just glob for all of the files. And in this case, we're looking for all of the CPP files. This is indicated by this star here, all for the CPP files that are in the current directory. And we do not need to specify which files exactly this are. It will find it out on its own. Now, if we use scons to build this one, we run again scons, and here we see that it um, it compiles three separate objects and one uh, program file afterwards, linking these object files together. So it nicely does the job, and we also see that here, for instance, the build flags are added to uh, these object files to the compiler as well. 
The next thing that is quite cool with ASCONS is that you can show the dependency tree and uh, ASCONS will show you how it exactly looks like. So the dependency tree with all build tools is always very, very important because the dependency tree will tell when exactly a program needs to be rebuilt and if something changes, which part of the program needs to be rebuilt. So for instance, we see that main.o is depending on main.cpp, line.h, shape.h, and also on the compiler. So we would rebuild main.o if any of these four things would change, if the compiler changes, or for instance, main.cpp, line.h, shape.h, one of them changes, Ascons would rebuild this exact compiler. So what we're gonna do now is we go here, for instance, to shape.cpp, and we add an additional uh, additional space at the end of the file, just so it uh, changes a little bit. And then we go here and build again. And then it should only rebuild the shape.o file and afterwards probably link it. However, in this case, it did not link the file because it was not necessary. Because the, as you see here, the main file, for instance, it doesn't depend uh, on the uh, shape.o file, so no, ne uh, no necessity to relink. After we have now looked a little bit uh, how to use ASCONS, what we can do is additionally to have a look into the powerful Python mechanics that you can do with ASCONS. For instance, if you go to the S construct file, this is purely Python code. May not look like it right now, but it's really, really just Python code. So you can do anything that you would also do in Python here. So for instance, we can just give this return value here a name, and then afterwards, we can use it to do additional things. So for instance, we could, could iterate over it. So obviously for this, you need to know what exactly is inside uh, this that an app can have, in this case, additional items. So you need to know a little bit of uh, about the internal structure of these uh, things that are uh, returned, of these uh, classes. But this is something that you can easily look up online. And if you want to build something that is really uh, sophisticated, then usually you should know this anyways. So what we're going to do now is we're going to iterate, for instance, uh, through the complete app and then through all of the childs of the items that are inside and then print those items. Um, what will happen here is that basically we will recreate the target list that we have already seen by using here this um, minus minus tree command. However, in this, I, I just save this. In this case, we have now used the Python script to output it. So if we now let ASCONS run, we would see that we get four different additional outputs, which is line.o, main.o, shape.o, and the compiler again. So we see that this app now has basically four, uh, four items attached to it, and these four items are the dependency tree of this particular app. So we have now had a look at the big benefits and uh, about the usability that this sconstruct files offer. But one last remark for sconstruct, it should never be used for bigger projects because it's unimaginably slow. If you have projects of a decent size, it will cripple down to a halt at some extent. Some part of this is because it's comparing whether a file has changed, not when it has last been touched, but by MD5 checksum. So this is a little bit of a flaw, but you can also configure that the way. But even if you do that for big projects, it's not recommendable because it's just really, really slow. So that's all for today. You can download uh, SCONS for yourself and try it out, play a lot around a little bit with that. I hope you learned something today and as always, enjoy coding.